Thank you very much for inviting us today. Many thanks to Jasper, uh, to Anna, and to all the Seedbox team for this event and for having us here. Uh, so in the next five minutes, which might be eight, not more, you should trust me on this. Uh, anyway, in these few minutes, what we are going to do is to present the lab, the Environmental Humanities Laboratory at KTH, and then we will zoom in one specific project, which was actually funded by the seed box. So we hope that this can be also an example about what we are doing at the lab. So uh, maybe most of you uh, may have heard of the Environmental Humanities Laboratory in Stockholm. It was conceived in 2011 and started more or less in 2013. Um, Two are the, I think that there are two key terms to try to explain, to present the Environmental Humanities Laboratory. One term is of course the lab itself as a term, and the other one is a little bit our uh, motto, how can I say, this idea of um, undisciplining the humanities. So why? First of all, uh, we, uh, let's start with the word lab. So the lab is basically the lab refers to our intellectual curiosity, to our uh, willingness to experiment and question the divide between academic space and the world out there, the world outside the wall of this university, of all the universities. Then when we speak about uh, undisciplining, undisciplining humanities, actually we started saying we want to undisciplining the environment, then we, go, we went to the humanities and now the hashtag is undisciplining everything. So not sure <laughs> where we are ending. You never know, never start something like that. Uh, so uh, when we talk about undisciplining, we think that this is connected to this idea of intellectual curiosity. Um, for us, undisciplining means to free intellectual spaces for practicing new ways of doing the humanities. Undisciplining is our way to affirm that another university, another academic space is not only, is not only possible, but it must be. We must find another way of thinking and practicing our um, practice as scholars and university um, intellectual people working in the university. Um, this, uh, this one is a little bit the kind of network that we have built. And what I want to stress here is, so this is the connection we have around the world, more or less. And as you can see here, we have sure academic partners, but we have also a lot of civil society organizations as partners. And I think that this is also a way for me to show that when we talk about undisciplining, going beyond the borders of the academia, and try to do it weird, as you can see. Uh, well, I think that we are serious, we really try. Then, you know, the result, of course, might be controversial, but we are really trying hard to do so. Those are some of the projects that we are running at the lab, and those are some of the projects in which we have been trying to experiment and undisciplining uh, humanities and beyond. Uh, I don't think that here I have time, even if I have eight minutes, but it would be very uh, pointless to try to, you know, go a very, go around and try to explain to you all the projects that we have been doing. Uh, and by the way, we have also with us these postcards and a lot of materials, including t-shirts. So if you want to know more about the lab, maybe we can talk later and, you know, you can also check our website. So instead, I am now zooming in one specific project. The project which was funded by, talk, by the seed box. Uh, the title of the, of the project is Toxic Bios, a guerrilla narrative project. Uh, here I have uh, my co-founder of the project, Ilenia Yengo. She's not anymore at the lab, not because I fired her, but because actually she was a master student and she found a fantastic PhD position in Berlin in a European project, an ITN uh, project on feminist political ecology. So this project works very well, I think. Anyway, toxic bias. Um, so uh, if I should try to explain very quickly what was toxic bias 
about, I can read from our postcards. So Toxic Bios is a guerrilla narrative project mapping contamination, illness and resistance through emancipatory storytelling. It was funded by the seed box and uh, has, has gathered so far about 70 stories from those affected by contamination in different countries and is actively actually seeking for more stories. So this is a short description of the project. And this is how the project looks like in the online platform. So you have a map basically and you can click on the dot on the map and you will find a toxic <coughs> bios, a toxic autobiographies. Um, but you can also do a research there on the top and so you can search for themes, uh, keywords, countries, eventually names or whatever you are looking for. Um, toxic bios, we, I, I think that toxic bios as a project is more or less a an example, really like a handbook example, of what we said about experimental and undiscipline related to the Environmental Humanities Lab. Really, it is a good way to think about ourselves as a place, as a place experimenting new way of co-producing knowledge with civil society organization. Many times when I try to explain this project, people, sometimes people, especially academics, Difficult people, believe me, really difficult people. Many times academics, they start asking me, okay, but okay, what is the point? Why you are collecting this toxic autobiography? I mean, what is your main, can, can you actually change things? Sure, why not? Let's, give, let's start a revolution and, you know, drop dead the contamination, you know, system that is polluting our lives and our cities. No, I can't, I, I will not change. What we really believe is that through a guerrilla narrative to the possibility of a counter-hegemonic storytelling, we can actually uncover the histories of injustice that are often hidden because contamination is of course happening in our communities, in our bodies, in our soil, air, and so on and so forth. But it's also something happening in our mind. I think that Angela Davis was very, very you know, crucial when we said that you know, in order to Decolonia, and now I am quoting Dolly in a way, in order to decolonize the world, you need to decolonize your mind. And so if there is a toxic narrative which silences or makes invisible injustice, what is important is precisely to counter, to have a counter-hegemonic storytelling which fight back against this toxic narrative. So um, as I said, toxic bias challenges the hierarchies of knowledge production, experiments with different formats and research practices. Actually, in the website, there are stories which are mainly video stories, some audios, a bit of written text, not so many, but we have also music video. People who decided to tell their own toxic bios with a music video, and for us it was okay. And experiments, a new method, and again, toxic bios, experiments, a new methodology, what we have called guerrilla narrative. And I think that talking about guerrilla seems undisciplined enough to me. Thank you very much.